Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're talking about Beltane and discussing the different ways that you can celebrate this as a solo practitioner or as part of a larger group or coven. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some additional inspiration for your own celebrations. <music> Beltane is a beautiful festival. Typically it takes place around the 1st of May and falls between Ostara and Letha. Now although many people would consider Beltane to simply be one of many celebrations within the Wheel of the Year, it's actually a Gaelic festival that was added into the Wheel of the Year celebrations and is one of the Celtic fire festivals. Now the festival of Beltane is also pronounced Beltana and I really hope that that's right. I looked up so many different pronunciations and I really struggled to find some that lined up. So feel free to correct me preferably kindly in the comment section because I would love to be able to get it right just once. <laughs> I've tried so hard for this video and I'm really struggling. For the duration of this video I will be pronouncing it as Beltane mostly because I don't want to butcher the pronunciation and say it 12 different ways and for all of them to be wrong. So I hope that any native Irish speakers will understand, I just don't want to butcher the language any more than I already have. Many people know of Beltane as being a fertility festival, but it's not just about reproductive fertility, it's about the fertility of the land and the environment around us. This is a time of year where baby animals are everywhere, where the trees are finally in leaf, where flowers are everywhere, people are struggling potentially with hay fever, but the days are longer and the sun is out and it's beautiful outside. But Beltane isn't just associated with this fertile, abundant energy, it's also associated with fire. Traditionally, bale fires are lit during this time of year, and there are still celebrations that happen today where traditional fires are lit every single year. Because of this, Beltane can be celebrated in many different ways depending on the aspect of this festival you want to draw on or your specific tradition. Celebrating Beltane from a Wiccan perspective is going to be slightly different than celebrating Beltane from a traditional folkloric perspective, and so the way that you celebrate this is going to be unique and individual. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the ways that I have celebrated Beltane, and they're going to vary from really simplistic things that you can do as a solitary practitioner, perhaps even if you are not open about your practice, all the way up to things that you can do within a coven or a group. But do remember, everyone is going to be different. And if you would like to add your own celebrations into this, feel free to let me know what you're doing for Beltane Down in the comment section. To get started, let's talk about going outside. While to many people, going outside might not sound like a celebration, to many pagans, Wiccans and witches, that connection with nature is really sacred. And at this time of year, it is ideal for getting outside and spending a little time reconnecting with it. This doesn't have to be disappearing into the wilderness for weeks on end. It could be sitting on your balcony, going out into your back garden, spend a few minutes in the local park on your way to work, or it could be sitting in a flowery meadow on a weekend. It doesn't necessarily have to be on Beltane, so if you are struggling with time or the weather isn't particularly great, don't feel as though you have to go outside on the day itself. The season is beautiful in and of itself, and it's a great way of reconnecting with the world around us, and if you are having a little bit of a problem connecting to your practice, getting outside to nature and rerouting yourself in the natural environment can be a really good way of re-sparking that inspiration for your practice. While you're out there, you might want to carry out some meditation and even some nature divination, such as augury. These can be beautiful practices, and at this time of year, when the weather is getting a little bit better, it's a great time to do that. If you feel drawn to do so, now could be a good time to start connecting with nature spirits. With the flowers in bloom and the trees now in leaf, you might find more drawn to plants and trees than you maybe were in the earlier months of the year. Spend time sitting with a particular tree or plant. It can be just for a few minutes, it could be a few hours, whatever you feel comfortable with. While spending time in nature, without distractions, you might find that you notice things that you wouldn't otherwise. Perhaps you hear whispers in the wind or a flash of light among the trees. While these could be mundane, they could also be the first signs of a nature spirit and a connection that you may want to form. Spend time with them, interact with them, notice things about them that maybe you wouldn't. Is the texture of the wood different than on a different tree? Are the leaves a different shape? Look at all the detail among the flowers. What animals really like the flowers? And really start building that connection with the plants and trees that are around you. It could also be a good time to take out an identification guide so that you can really figure out the types of plants and trees that are all around you. Along the same vein, you can also include in seasonal items or natural products into your spells and rituals. It's a great time to start connecting with the natural world. And while we're doing that, we might find that something speaks to us that wants to be included into our practice. 
And if you are the kind of practitioner who uses the same tools and the same plants every single time you practice, regardless of the season, this could be a great way of adding something new into your practice, even if it's just temporary. If you formed a connection with a particular tree or a particular plant and you've done your research on it, you may wish to sustainably harvest it, only taking a small amount at the suitable times of day so that you can then include that energy and that plant spirit into your magical practice. And with this, you can also take your practice outside, while I don't recommend every style of practice to be brought outside, please always be careful with blades and candles. They are not the kind of things that you would want to bring into a natural environment where they might cause harm. You can do a lot of your magical practice outside if you're able to. This doesn't have to be ornate complex rituals. It can just be sitting in front of a plant that you've got a connection to and requesting its aid in a particular aspect of your life. Sit with the plant for a few minutes, offer it some energy, and then look out for the results. You might find that simple connections to nature without large complex rituals can be really successful for your magical practice, and it could help with breaking you out of any kind of stagnancy that you might have within your craft. If going outside with your practice isn't something you feel comfortable with or simply isn't something that you can physically do, you can also bring the outside in. Traditionally at this time of year, yellow flowers are brought into the home or surround the front doorstep or the front door. This helps to bring in positive, uplifting energies into the home and often acts as a kind of seasonal blessing. People will also bring in plants that represent their season. These might include daffodils or really any flower that you have a deep connection with. It could also be a good time to bring in some greenery, a potted plant that you can then decorate much like you would a Christmas or a Yule tree. These are really popular at this time of year and especially if you don't live somewhere that has a lot of outside space or any outside space, it can really help you connect more deeply with the season because you are bringing all of that green abundant energy into your home. Now when it comes to decorating, you don't just have to use greenery, you can also use the colours and the symbols of the season. Now the colours will vary depending on the aspect of this celebration you want to follow, but they're often yellows, reds, golds, blues, greens, whites, and pinks. They're often very vibrant colours. Think looking at a wildflower bed. That's what we're thinking of when we're talking about Beltane, as well as the colours of a roaring bonfire, something people might be dancing around. These are all really popular colours, and they're also really uplifting colours, so they can be really great to bring in at this time of year. You also then have symbolism. So you can create your own mini maypole that you can have inside your home, and we will talk about maypoles in just a moment. You can also have symbolism of a god and a goddess, the idea of union and fertility. This is probably a little bit more of a Wiccan style of practice, but it can be added in even if you aren't specifically Wiccan. You can also add in symbolism of flowers, of solar energy, as well as animals as well, especially baby animals. They're really good as representation of this time of year. When you're working with the symbolism of this season, you don't necessarily have to decorate your space, not if you aren't comfortable doing so or aren't able to. You can simply wear the colours of the season. This could be in your makeup, in your nail polish, in your tie, in your socks, whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing. This small celebration might seem insignificant to people who maybe attend large groups and gatherings, but for solitary practitioners who are often very private about their practice, this small thing can make a big difference between celebrating and not celebrating. So if wearing the colours of the season is all you feel comfortable doing, that is a perfectly valid celebration. If, however, you do want to take it a step further and maybe you have an altar space, you can also decorate your altar. Now I love decorating my altars, I have a dedicated Sabbat altar that I decorate every single season. And on this Sabbat, I really wanted to focus on the bright colours, the floral energy, the fertile energy, and so I've decked my altar out in everything that makes me happy at this time of year. Now this is going to vary depending on you as an individual. Some people might have no altar at all and might simply decorate their home. Others will have an entire room that acts as an altar that they can decorate. Even if your altar is a small box or maybe even your screensaver on your computer, decorating it and giving it a revival at this time of year can be really good for uplifting any stagnant and unwanted energies. So regardless of how big or small your altar is, now is a great time to even just add a small amount of symbolism onto that space. 
I will include a little clip of me setting up my altar, but if you would like to see the full video, it is on Instagram. I will leave the link in the description box. One thing that I almost always suggest as part of these Sabbath celebrations is to have a feast, or at least to have some food in celebration of the season. Now, this doesn't have to be a massive banquet for hundreds of people. It could simply be making food with significance to the celebration. Now, I would typically recommend looking for some seasonal food. So if you can go to your local greengrocers or your local farm shop, that could be a great way of helping you more deeply connect with the land that you are living on. This is also useful if you are struggling with your practice and feel a little bit stagnant. This kind of connection to the earth around us can really help develop our practice further. If eating seasonal is not really something you're after and instead you want something a little bit more sweet, you can also make fairy cakes. These are really popular to do at this time of year because of their association with the fair folk and the trooping of the fae that is happening around this time of year. Now these feasts can be with an entire coven or just by yourself. Just eat something with significance to the natural world at this time of year. Or if you don't want to eat something in relation to the natural world, bring some food outside, have that connection to nature whilst you are eating. And you can also give a libation to the nature spirits, the fair folk, and also to the land itself while you're there. Now talking about the fae folk, now is the time of year where you may well see fae out and about in the countryside. Many fae will travel from their winter to their summer locations and then back again at certain times of the year. And Beltane is a really popular time for fae to move from one location to another. So if you're out in nature, you might hear some strange sounds and see some strange sights. So try to be respectful, do not confront them. And if you do have any fairy cakes, milk or honey that you can give as an offering, this could be a good time to do that. Around this Sabbath, we'll often see a lot of group celebrations. And while not everyone might want to work in a group every single time they practice, it can be nice to sometimes make connections within the magical and spiritual communities. Around Beltane, you'll often find a lot of markets, a lot of shows, events, and celebrations where the pagan, Wiccan, and witchcraft communities will come together to celebrate as a collective. These can often be seen as music festivals, pagan gatherings, moots, and outside celebrations. Many of these are suitable for both children and adults. Some of them involve camping over, having workshops and courses, and they can be a great way of both expanding your practice and meeting like-minded people. Do keep an eye on social media in your local area and you may well find something local going on that you can attend. If a fully pagan, Wiccan, or witchcraft gathering is not something that's available to you, or maybe it's just not really your thing, you can also try looking for local celebrations. Now, especially in England, there are many villages and towns that will still do May Day celebrations. These will typically take place across the month of, you guessed it, May. And they often have a lot of Beltane symbolism, including being in nature, flower crowns, which we'll get onto, as well as potentially even maypoles. Now, maypoles are a really interesting practice. They are a phallic symbol that is then bound with brightly colored ribbons. Now, these ribbons are often in the colors of the Beltane season and whether that's intentional or not, that's usually what they are. Now young people will usually be dancing around the maypole weaving these ribbons as they go and it's a very ceremonial almost ritualistic act even if people don't see it so much that way now. If you have the chance to join in on a maypole celebration, you can think of your goals and wishes being tied together with the energy of the maypole dance as it's bound into the larger maypole. They are really beautiful celebrations and even if you don't join in on one, being able to witness one is a beautiful way to celebrate the season and these celebrations usually take place in areas where there's face painting for children and lots of food and it could be a great way of gathering together a lot of these different practices into one location that also allows you to connect with your local community. But as mentioned, if you do want to decorate your space or perhaps your altar, you can make yourself a mini maypole to act as representation. You can then add this into your own ritual or spell work practices if that's something that you're interested in. Around May, you'll also find the tradition of well dressing is still live and well in many different locations. Now, well dressings have moved their way through different religions and traditions over the years, but it's believed that they may have originated with people giving offerings to water and well spirits. In many villages, you'll still find that well dressings happen to this day. Usually they happen between May and June, and so it's a good way to combine both celebrations with other people and also a connection with nature all into one. 
Typically at a well dressing, the local people will gather to watch a well be dressed with flowers and sometimes candles and items, and it's a very symbolic practice that many people will still celebrate to this day. While it isn't necessarily a Beltane celebration, if nearby you do have a well dressing, it can be a great way of reconnecting with water spirits and also the spirits of the land which might make it easier for people who aren't necessarily comfortable just sitting and listening to nothing whilst in nature, and instead they want to be doing something a little bit more active while connecting with the natural world. Now I couldn't talk about Beltane and outside festivals without talking about fire festivals. During this time of year, it's fairly traditional for bale fires to be lit. These are very ceremonial in nature and they are still done to this day, so if you have the chance to visit a bale fire celebration, they are wonderful to attend. If you don't, however, there are several ways that you can bring the fire aspect of a fire festival into your own practice. Even if there are no strictly bale fire celebrations, you may well find that May Day celebrations and other local events will have a bonfire at this time of year, where people can gather outside, there's usually food and music and dancing, and even if it isn't specifically a Beltane festival, they can be great just to get outside and connect with that energy with other people. You can also have a candle burning on your altar over Beltane as a representation of these bale fires fires, or you can have your own bonfire, fire pit, or cauldron fire. Please though, do make sure you always have fire safety on hand. This use of fire can be included in solitary practice and also with coven or group practice as well. If you wish to, you can write your goals and wishes onto a piece of paper and then release it into the fire, allowing that abundant, fertile energy to take your wish and to manifest it strongly. If you want to add some extra intention into that, you can also add in some herbs that represent this season into the center of that paper, seal it up, and then drop it carefully into the fire. Some herbs and plants that you might want to use to represent the season are yarrow, mint, and mugwort, marigolds, daisies, and lots of yellow flowers. I personally enjoy using yellow roses as well, as I think they just have a beautiful, positive energy. While I'm on the topic of a Beltane fire, I couldn't miss out on the burning of the Nine Woods. Now, this is a tradition that is commonly seen within many pagans and Wiccans, and it is the burning of nine sacred trees to imbue their energy into the space and into the lives of the people that are a part of that ritual. Typically, the nine woods are gathered from trees that have consented, requests have been made to them after a connection has been formed, and then a small section of their wood is then taken, dried, and then it is suitable for burning as part of a nine woods fire. The woods that go into the nine woods does vary depending on what you're looking at online. Some sites will include the use of elder, others do not. Personally, I wouldn't recommend elder, but that's simply because of my own tradition. The nine woods that I personally know of and go by are as follows. They're birch, rowan, ash, alder, willow, hawthorn, oak, holly, and hazel. And these woods can be burned as part of a larger celebration, perhaps a coven celebration or even just an individual celebration among doing other things. They can also be included into active spell work and ritual. Now there is a little phrase that goes alongside these woods and this was what I was taught and it's why I typically won't use elder in any of my burning celebrations. Nine woods in the cauldron go, burn them quick and burn them slow. Elder be ye ladies tree, burn it not or cursed ye'll be. Not everyone is gonna follow this rhyme, so do make sure to do your own research to make sure that you are picking nine woods that are suitable for this practice. While something that not everyone is going to want to do, and I wouldn't recommend that you enter into it lightly, hand fastings are often done around the Beltane season. Now a hand fasting is a union celebration. In some places they are legal, just like a wedding would be, whereas in other locations, they're more of a social commitment to another person. They are so beautiful and often carried out around this time of year. They're usually outside, which really helps as the weather is starting to get better. And if you are interested in having a hand fasting between you and your partner, Beltane and Letha are often really good times for these to be carried out. While you might not have time for it this year, in the future you may well want to plan it around this season. Just bear in mind that they're often quite busy at this time of year because of the association with fertility, abundance, and just positive energies. At outside events like hand fastings, May Day celebrations, pagan gatherings, and bell fires, you'll often find that flower crowns are worn by so many visitors to these events. Now, while they might just look like decorative items, flower crowns are very symbolic of this season. They're a way of taking the natural world and bringing it into our lives, and many people will create them with specific intentions in mind. These are really good for making with children, with coven members, or simply by yourself while out in nature. 
You can use flowers that are simply found around you as long as it's safe for you to do so, but you can also choose flowers of specific colors or with specific intentions and weaving them together to form a magical tool that you can then use in your spells and rituals surrounding the Beltane season. Flower crowns are just so beautiful and you'll often find a lot of people gathering together and teaching flower crown classes and so you can always attend one of those or make it yourself. I will also leave any links for making flower crowns yourself or making mini maypoles, they will be down in the description box. For those among us who enjoy divination, now is a great time to be having some readings done for the year ahead or at least the season ahead. There are some forms of divination that are fairly specific to this Sabbath, such as fire scrying and also water scrying in sacred wells. These are good if you aren't really much for additional tools and would rather just use your psychic abilities. You allow yourself to zone out while looking into running water or looking at a fire. Allow your eyes to soften and thinking of your question, you take in any images, any symbols, any colours that you might be seeing and experiencing, noting them down and then forming your conclusions of an answer based on that information. You can, of course, do more traditional forms of divination, such as tarot reading, oracle reading, pendulums, runes, tassiomancy, but if you want to try something new, you can also give augury a go. Augury is the use of divination via birds, and it's a really fascinating subject in itself. The direction the birds are heading in, the number of birds, the colour of them, the type of them, are all significant to finding your answer. It's a really good topic, I'm going to have to do a full video on it to do it justice. And then lastly, whether you are a solitary practitioner or you are working in a group, now could be a good time to carry out your spells and rituals. Now there are many practitioners who don't practice during Sabbath celebrations, whereas others might want to harness the energy of this time of year. Whatever you decide, go with your gut instinct. If you're not sure what you would prefer, try doing some divination and some spells and rituals, and if you don't really like the feel of it, then just take the Sabbath season off. You don't have to do anything during these Sabbaths, so if you would like to do some spells and rituals, there are quite a few options. Because this time of year is so deeply focused on fertility and abundance, prosperity, and also the fire element, these are all things that you can draw on in your spells and rituals. Good luck spells, money spells, as well as fertility magic is really good at this time of year. You can also carry out your sex magic at this time of year, whether by yourself or with a partner, as well as connecting with the fire element and fire elementals. Some more specific practices that you can do at this time of year would be to gather the dew that is found on grass early on Beltane morning. This can then be used in beauty and glamour magic, and this is a really old tradition. It's also a powerful healing and nurturing agent, so you might want to add it into your spells for that purpose. You may want to, as I've mentioned earlier in this video, do some spells and rituals revolving the maypole and also around bale fires. This could be weaving your spells and rituals into your own miniature maypoles, or using the fire as a vessel for directing your energy to positive and powerful ends. You can also ask for aid from spirits and from the natural world, whispering your wishes onto the wind, or using it to cleanse away unwanted energies are both really good practices. You can also burn incense for the Sabbath, whether this is something that has been specifically created for the Sabbath season, or it simply contains plants, flowers and woods that are associated with the Sabbath, that can be a really discreet way of celebrating. And if you're more of a perfume person, you can also use perfume that represents that floral, abundant energy. I often find that really heavily floral perfumes represent the season for me, but I know that that's not going to be for everyone. So just find something that really connects you with the season, and that outside, fresh, abundant energy. There are so many different ways of celebrating this Sabbath, I have only scratched the surface on the different spells, rituals, traditions and practices that you can carry out. I really hope that at least some of these are going to be useful to you, and that maybe it might have sparked some inspiration for you within your own celebrations. If you are going to celebrate in a different way, please let us know in the comment section so that we can share even more information on this subject. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. I do have other videos on the different Sabbaths, so I will leave a playlist at the end of this video if you would like to learn a little bit more about some of the others. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to post it down in the comment section. I will also leave a link to the Discord server so that if you would like to talk more about this subject, you can do so over there. If you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post magical content every single week. And with that being said, I hope you have a marvellous magical day. I hope you have a blessed Sabbath and I will see you in the next video. Bye. 20% on my battery. That's not gonna be enough. Ooh.
da 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 How is there a fly in here? Everything's closed. <laughs> the door has been closed all day. I don't, I don't know how that one's happened. I'm just gonna try and not think about it too much. So I've just sat down to film and I have spent my entire evening trying to find a correct pronunciation for Beltane. And I cannot find any website or any body who seems to agree on it. And it's stressing me out because it seems like different people and different websites and different videos have completely different pronunciations. And it's really hard to know what's right. And then you scroll into the comments of those pronunciation videos and everyone is just arguing <laughs> and so I don't know how to pronounce it. I've kind of settled on Beltana or Beltana and I have to say it so many times in this video and I don't know what to say. <sighs> okay, I think I'm just gonna go for a hybrid mix and uh, hope for the best. Yeah, that's all I can do I think at this point is I just have to go for it, hope for the best. I really hope I didn't miss anything. It would be my luck. I will will do this entire video and then I will have forgotten something. Mm -hmm.